Hi, I'm Mark Montano, and you're watching Make Your Mark. Today we have some great projects for you. We're going to be working with a really fun material. Book pages. We'll be creating book page glass dishes. I'll be showing you a fun new way to mat your images. We'll learn an alternative to scrapbooking, and we'll even turn some pages into a fashionable accessory. All in today's episode, Bookworm. This show is made possible by Krylon. Krylon has been formulating paints that deliver color, durability, and fast dry time since 1947. Our range of products expands from indoors to out with a variety of formulations to meet project needs, from plastic and laminate to rust preventative and craft and hobby products. And by Eclectic Products, makers of the E6000 family of adhesives. E6000 professional strength adhesives for crafts, decor, home repairs, scrapbooking, photos, framing, and more. E6000 industrial strength adhesive. Favecrafts.com is proud to sponsor Make Your Mark. At Favecrafts.com, you can find craft projects, videos, and tips. New crochet, Christmas crafts, sewing, kids crafts, jewelry making, knitting, paper craft projects, and more. And by Plaid Enterprises. Plaid has been happily helping crafters bring ideas to life with products such as Folk Art, Delta, Apple Barrel, Lucilla, Gallery Glass, One Stroke, and Mod Podge. Plaid, creative ideas made easy. I love throwing dinner parties with themes. I'll use everything from vintage comic books to Victorian clip art to create my table settings. I even like to make my own decorative dishes and plates if my current set doesn't fit what I'm doing. I searched the internet and I found an assortment of great ideas for decorative plates, but I couldn't find dishes you could actually eat off of. I finally figured out a great way to take inexpensive dollar store glass plates and decorate them so my guests can eat off of them. You can personalize them to fit any theme or design and they make great dinner conversation. First thing you want to do is head to the dollar store and pick up some very simple clear glass plates just like this one. We're going to put it face down on the table, put it on some scrap paper or some newspaper, it's up to you. And we're going to take our gold enamel pen and we're going to draw all the way around the edge. Now this is going to take a little bit of skill but if you mess up, just stop, wipe it off and start again. Watch how I do this. See how easy that is? It looks beautiful too. Oh, see, I messed up. And then I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm gonna wipe it off. And just wipe it on the table there. Nobody's perfect! Now we're going to take any image that you want and cut it out. You can copy these images on your home copy machine. It doesn't really matter. I found this beautiful cabbage rose. Great thing about this is if you make 10 or 12 plates, you have an entire set of dishes for not a lot of money. Look at that. The next thing we're going to do is take our gloss sealer and water it down just a tiny bit so that it's easy to spread. And watch, I'm just gonna put that in there a tiny, tiny bit of water and mix it up. Give it a nice consistency. And I'm gonna paint it right on top of the image. See what I'm doing? Scary. I'm gonna take the image and just plop it right in the middle of our plate. Make sure that it's nice and flat. 
You excited? You want to see this? Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's finish this up with some book pages. Now, I've had a water-damaged dictionary that I've been dying to use the pages from. So I took out some, some decent pages from it, and I'm going to cut them up kind of around where the water damage was into some small squares, about two inches by three inches. The next thing we want to do is take about, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 of them. Let me show you a little trick here that's going to make this go really fast. You're going to put the stack underneath the edge of the plate, just like this. You're going to take a pencil and trace right around the edge. Pull that off. Take your scissors. Cut that right there. I'll show you how quick everything is after this. So the next thing we're going to do is take more glue, water down just a tiny, tiny bit so that it's easy to spread. I'm going to start painting the glue on the back of the plate. And we're going to add one of our little squares. Remember those little pieces that we cut with the curve, those go right around the edge of your plate. And you don't have to trim them later. So check this out. There you go, just like that. I know, it's like magic, right? You're like Phew. So we're almost done here. I'm gonna flip this over so that you can see it. Check that out. Okay, what you want to do is add more of the acrylic gloss on the back. Really lay it on thick so that it's a nice protective coat. Let it dry for a mm, couple of hours and you're good to go. You just don't want to put it in the dishwasher. What you want to do is wash it off with a sponge. All right, now I'm really hungry since I've been making all these plates. I want a snack. I love to frame vintage images and postcards to create artwork for my home. To make it even more interesting, I like matting my artwork with book pages. This method of matting used with several small pieces of art is a great way to spruce up a boring wall in your home. It's also inexpensive and really easy to do. Book pages can make a simple piece of art or a photograph look amazing. And I'll bet you have everything you need to do this project already. First thing I did was put a book on my home copy machine and copied it on a piece of colored paper. Really easy to do, right? I picked out my art. This is a copyright free image, but you could use a photograph or a postcard, anything that you have at home that you want to frame. I'm taking my frame and I'm popping out the cardboard. So we're going to cut this copied page the same size as the cardboard in the mat. Just put the cardboard on top of this and follow it as a guideline. So easy. All right, we have our book page matting. The next thing we wanna do is cut out our image or cut out your photograph, whatever it is that you have that you want to frame. So here I go. Since our theme is bookworm today, I have a man holding a pen. Maybe he's writing a book. I don't know. Done. We're almost ready. I'm going to put a cardboard in the frame. Place the matting right on top of it. 
put a tiny bit of glue on the back of your image, or you could use double stick tape, whatever it is that you feel comfortable with, just using a tiny bit to keep it in place so that it doesn't move. Just center that right on that, just like that. Okay. Easy. Pop this glass right back on top of the frame. And there you go. Now you've got some classy book page matting and it only took a minute. Awesome. Scrapbooks are a great way to capture memories and give your photos a story and context. My friend Sheila Goldsbury has a different take on scrapbooking that I really love. She calls them smash books, and they're a truly fun twist on a traditional scrapbook. You can use any decorative odds and ends, so it's the perfect leftover project. Kids also have a great time making them. So get ready to get messy and have some fun making a smash book. I'll bet you have everything you need to make a smash book already. Smashbooks have been around for a while, and a couple of weeks ago, my good friend Sheila Goldsbury sent me one for my birthday. This Smashbook was so awesome, and the thing that made it super cool is that she made it with paper bags so that you could have little inserts and things to pull out. I loved it. So that's what we're going to make today. Thanks, Sheila. All right. The first thing you're going to need is about six or seven paper bags, and you're just going to fold it just like that. Doesn't matter, you can fold it either way. See what I've done there? Okay, I'm gonna do that to each of the bags. We are going to take a hole punch and just give it three little punches. Equidistant apart. Ish. Okay, so we've punched our hole in the first bag right where the fold is, okay? We're just gonna put it right on top of our other bags, just like that. So we've measured where our holes are going to be on everything and let's just go ahead and punch them out. So everything matches up. Ah, oh, I have so much fun making these. How are we keeping these together, you might ask? Easy. Head to the dollar store and pick up some office clips, all right? See how this is coming together? See what I'm doing here? We've got our bags and we are ready to start smashing. Okay, here's what I've done. I've gathered tons of different things. What I wanna start with though, are pictures of me and my friends, pictures of just projects that I've done, just pictures. I'm gonna cut them out, a pair of scissors. like that. Doesn't even matter if you're neat about it. In fact, if you're not neat about it, it's even better. It's not called the Neat and Tidy Book. It's called Smash Book. You can use just a little bit of glue. That's easy enough to do sometimes. Or you can use a sticker machine to speed things up. Like that. Just throw in the images. I really like printing out photos from my camera phone because usually they just sort of stay in your phone and you never actually get to see them. Okay, so we've got our pictures on the pages. The next thing we wanna do is create some inserts. So we want to sort of figure out how big of a piece of scrapbook paper or cardboard, whatever you have, whatever you wanna use, will fit inside the paper bag. So we've got something right here. This, is, this looks about right. This paper cutter. Let's 
See what I've done? I've cut scrapbook papers, just whatever you have, and I've cut them the size to fit right inside each of the mouths of the paper bag, just like that. See how that is? Pretty cool, right? Okay, we're gonna start decorating these two. Let's put some pictures on here. Oh, I like that one. It's me in New York. Put them on both sides of the scrapbook paper too. The more stuff you have in your Smashbook, the better. Not crazy enough yet. Okay, fun thing about this, we're gonna put a hole punch in it, just like that. We're gonna take a tiny piece of ribbon. Put it through the punch. Tie a little knot here. See that? And that way, when you put it inside the paper bag, you can pull it out. Pretty cool, huh? Everybody has rubber stamps, so we're just gonna take rubber stamps and start stamping our book all over the place to just give it some, some interest. Perfection is completely overrated. The next thing we wanna do is add some color. So you just wanna take some of your favorite paints. You're gonna paint around the edges of the pictures, the edge of each page. Just add some fun color, just to make it pop a little bit. I don't think smash books are ever actually done. You could really just keep going with them forever. The next thing you wanna do is take something like a shaped punch. This is a star punch, it's one of my favorites. Just punch out some different colors of paper. You can use these stars for all kinds of things. I use a star punch because it's a lot faster than cutting shapes out with scissors. So I'm a really big fan of the shaped punches. The next thing we're going to do is add some gems. Everything needs a little bit of sparkle, don't you think? You could add glitter if you want to, but that's a little bit messy. I like to add uh, acrylic gems. So what we're going to do is take all these different colors of ribbon and tie them around the office rings at the end. Just to give it a nice festive feel. Kids love this stuff. Okay, I love this stuff. Can I add enough gems? Let's add another gem. Now you don't just have to do what I've suggested here. You could do all kinds of things. You can add glitter. You can put ticket stubs. You can use your thumbprints. You don't just have to use photographs. You could use game board pieces. Whatever you have that you want to add to your Smashbook, you add it and that's going to make it yours. I love this Smashbook. Check it out, peekaboo. I believe your accessories should be as interesting as you are, which is why I like using book pages in mixed media jewelry pieces. The challenge with using the printed page when creating jewelry is that it's not always the most durable or water resistant. I figured a way to solve this issue and make an accessory with printed book pages that will stand the test of time and look great. The first thing you're going to want to do is take your favorite poem or a page from your favorite book and copy it on a piece of colored paper, whatever color you want. I've chosen two different colors of yellow because I love sunflowers. The next thing we're going to do is something I love doing. I love sewing paper. What we're going to do is freeform a flower on the sewing machine. And this is really fun. Now, 
Don't worry if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter, because when you're cutting out the flour, you can make it any shape you want. The key is just sewing a couple of sheets of paper together to give it a nice thickness. Here we go. I'm using a black thread so that it gives a nice contrast with the yellow and it matches the print. It's like you're drawing with the sewing machine. Now we're gonna do this on another color. We're gonna make this flower just a little bit smaller than the first. Now for this accessory, I'm alternating yellows. A light yellow, then a darker yellow, then a lighter yellow for the center. So my smallest flower is going to be in the light yellow. You having fun yet? You enjoying this? I know I am. Okay, we have three flowers, and just so you can see what they look like, I'm gonna turn this around. It's not beautiful. Now, if you don't wanna do it on a printed page like I'm doing it, you could just do it on plain paper. You could use scrapbook paper. You could even put some fabric on top of some paper. That might be really cool too. I'm not being very precise with this. I'm just kind of giving it a, sort of a crazy, haphazard, floral feel. Kind of like nature. All right, we've got our three flowers. Now I'm gonna show you how to make them last forever and then we're gonna turn them into an accessory. All you need is some acrylic gloss. And what you're going to do is coat the front and the back several times so it's nice and thick. And what it's gonna end up feeling like is a piece of vinyl. You know what vinyl is? It's that stuff your car seats are made out of. You know, when you stick to the car and the back seat in the summer, that's vinyl. There we go. Okay. Let that dry for a couple of hours, and then what you're gonna end up with are some very, very sturdy paper flowers that will last forever. We're gonna take an industrial strength glue and glue them together. largest flower is on the bottom. We get smaller as we go toward the top. Okay, see that? The next thing we're going to do is figure out what we want to put in the center of it to really make it sparkle and look like jewelry. There are all kinds of different things that you can use. You could use a button, you could use a rhinestone, or you could use a cabochon. Now there are all different things that you can do with these flowers. You could glue one to a headband, attach a hairband to it right in the back and then wear it on a ponytail. I think that could be pretty chic and really cute. You could also take a pin back and create it into a brooch, something like that. It's very grandma, but you know what? Grandmas are pretty chic. The other thing that you can do is poke a little hole in the top of one of the petals and create a necklace. My favorite thing to do is create a brooch out of it. So what we're going to do is take some more of our industrial glue and glue on a pin back. And you can find these at any craft store. Okay. You know, let that dry for about half an hour. Stick on a cabochon or a rhinestone and a pin on the back, and there you have it, Grandma Chic. In case you were wondering, no books were harmed in the making of this episode. We went from book smart to book art. We made some beautiful glass dishes, learned how to use book pages as a photo mat, 
found a fun new way to smash book our pictures and turn some pages into wearable art. Now it's your turn to make your mark. This show is made possible by Krylon. Krylon has been formulating paints that deliver color, durability, and fast dry time since 1947. Our range of products expands from indoors to out with a variety of formulations to meet project needs, from plastic and laminate to rust preventative and craft and hobby products. And by Eclectic Products, makers of the E6000 family of adhesives. E6000 professional strength adhesives for crafts, decor, home repairs, scrapbooking, photos, framing, and more. E6000 Industrial Strength Adhesive. Favecrafts.com is proud to sponsor Make Your Mark. At Favecrafts.com, you can find craft projects, videos, and tips. New crochet, Christmas crafts, sewing, kids crafts, jewelry making, knitting, paper craft projects, and more. And by Plaid Enterprises. Plaid has been happily helping crafters bring ideas to life with products such as Folk Art, Delta, Apple Barrel, Lucilla, Gallery Glass, One Stroke, and Mod Podge. Plaid. Creative ideas made easy.